In a scale of 1 to 10, how competitive is your program? I don't think there's really a number. Hey guys, today I'm here with my good friends Ray and Parker from Math and Physics Department from U of T. Today I'm going to be asking them some questions about Math and Physics, so here's everything you need to know about Math and Physics at U of T. So yeah, let's hear from you guys first. Uh, what's your name, year, and your program? My name is Ray, or Rayhan. I'm currently in third year at University of Toronto, and I'm currently in a double major of Physics and Statistics with a minor in Astrophysics. So I'm doing kind of all of them. I'm Parker, third year also and I'm an astrophysics specialist, so that's all I do. What's the most common stereotype about your program? You say, oh, I'm in astrophysics, and they're like, oh, you must be smart, eh? Yeah, <laughs> that's such that's a common what, thing. That's, like, that's what you hear every time. Similarly, another stereotype could be like, we're all nerds, and <laughs> even though, like, to a certain extent, like, we like learning, I think the word nerd is very, very, very... It's, you know it's what more I mean. intense. It's yeah, more it's, intense. It's, very, yeah. it's very intense. Like, I don't necessarily think that applies to everybody in the program. We know a lot of people <laughs> who are not like that. Then uh, describe your program in one word. It's dope. Wow. Dope. That's the word. <laughs> I'm gonna say thrilling. Then, what's the estimated starting salary for your faculty? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it all depends, mm -hmm. on, it all depends on, on where you go. Cause some people, you know, they do their undergrad and then they go find a job. I don't know where, right. to be honest. If you're just talking about physics, I think you're really looking at not many opportunities. You would mm. probably be looking at research assistant. You would be looking at lab technician. Okay. You'd be looking at, you know, you know, basically helping out the bigger guys. Okay. That's basically what you're gonna be looking at. Cause okay. as an undergrad, you basically have no knowledge. Right. <laughs> then how much tuition do you guys pay? Well, it went up since first year. I think first year was like 7,000. Okay. This year was like 7.8. Oh, not that much. I know it's somewhere from 7, 7 to 8,000. 8, okay. Right. Are the tuitions like vastly different for other ones? I know ramen yes. pays more, yeah. We pay like 16. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. And now a word from our sponsors. As a university student myself, I know how hard it is to gain work experience nowadays. And the reason why I'm saying this right now is because the sponsor of today's video is Acadium and they provide one of the best ways for you to start a career in marketing. Acadium essentially helps you gain work experience by finding you an apprenticeship which is kind of like an internship. With Acadium you'll be able to work with businesses and gain some mentorship and the best part about all of this is that Acadium is 100% free and remote and for 10 hours a week you'll be able to work directly in your mentor's business. Again being a university student myself I know how hard it is to gain some experience nowadays so if you're interested in starting a career in marketing make sure to go check out Acadium using the link in my description and let's get right back to the video again. What were your grades in high school before you guys came to U of T? Grade 12, I don't remember before grade 12, but okay. grade 12 my average was like a 92. Grade 12, okay I don't really remember the number at all. It was it was in the 90s, I'll, I mean I'll say that much, but I don't really remember what exactly okay. it was. I mean I can assume a subsequent question being what would be required to get in. Right. It's really not that high okay. for math and physics and the so. biggest reason is because there are not that many people applying to the program because it's pretty specific mm. so they kind of allow everyone in and as you as Parker just said like the only requirement is really that you kind of keep up with the workload and mm. you stay in okay you know? yeah that's actually my next question uh, yeah. Parker, do you have anything to say about you know what kind of GPAs or grades that you need in order yeah. to get into that program it's not crazy I think I think like the actual number is like 70% no no no, no, no average no. yeah no, I swear I swear when I was it's applying, definitely 80s no when I was applying I swear the average in like calculus that you needed okay was that's 70. required obviously but required mm. average usually doesn't get into yeah, university. Yeah, but they let, like, if you apply and you have a study, right. like, you'll, you'll get it. 80% or sure. higher, like, I would say 80% or higher in your final two grades. I mean, in your yeah, final two worry, years, well, it, yeah. don't worry. You, you, okay. you should be fine. Yeah. Then, uh, right now, how many hours do you guys study every day? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, too, much. Too, many to yeah, too much. Too many to count. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm I'm not joking when I say that my life right now is studying, <laughs> Just studying. and it's the saddest thing I've ever <laughs> had, had to say in my life. Then, how many hours do you guys sleep every day? Then, oh, I sleep a lot. Actually, in the beginning of the year, I used to go to bed at like 11 p.m. and then wake up. I don't know, like like 9, 10 a.m. Okay. <laughs> but nowadays, it's it's more like like midnight to 9 a.m. Yeah, I don't I don't get nine hours. Of sleep. <laughs> I just think that's borderline stupid. No, I mean, just study more. Right. Just study more in those hours, because no. like you have, the, you know, because it's six, seven. Okay, maybe six is a little extreme, but seven hours is like my brain.
breaking point of sleeping. Right. So seven hours I, I need. Anything more, I'll take, but I'll try to do around seven, seven and a half okay. hours. This is probably the most fun question I'm going to ask you guys. How's the party scene in your okay. life? <laughs> yeah, like, the, I, don't think I've, I don't think I've ever partied with a math and physics student other than Rayhan. Yeah. Yeah. You're not coming to this program to party again. You're not, you're right. not, you're not, not at all. <laughs> if you're coming into math and physics, you can. You no, can. If you can. want to, I mean, you if can. you want to party, you can really do that anywhere. I mean, there. this is downtown right. Toronto. It's not like you can't party. Right. But it's a wrong factor. First to do yes, so. okay. exactly. And you won't even really have time to at the end of the day, I think. Yeah. Like, you already yeah. won't. So you'll be like, wait, I have this dude on Sunday. Do I go to this party tonight? Then, uh, in a scale of 1 to 10, how competitive is your program? I don't think there's really a number that you can assign to like competitiveness mm. in like math and physics because yeah. people are just like working together, you know? Right. It's not really a race that you're running. So it's like cooperative? Yeah, no? 100%. Okay. Like, every time a problem set comes out, everybody kind of comes together, you know, they're sharing mm. ideas. Nice. It's, it's not really like a, oh, I did better than you. Like, yeah, oh, never. It's not really like okay. that. What's the hardest course that you guys took in oh, your program? Hardest course? Off, off the top of my head, it would have to be, it's called Quantum Mechanics 1. It's The course code is uh, PHY356. I don't know if it's notoriously hard, um, but it was hard. Okay. okay. No, <laughs> it's okay. okay. Uh, on the flip side, what was the easiest course that you guys took in your program? I think objectively, again, I'm going objectively, the easiest okay. course is Linear Algebra, like the okay. first one, which is MAT223, okay. which is a required course for I think almost every major. I don't don't you guys no, have to take no, it too? No, no, no. no. I think no, for no, I swear no. everybody had to take linear algebra. No, math and physics. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think, like on top of that, in second year we took uh, our first like astronomy class, which is required in the mm. astronomy program. It's it's like AST two two one two two two. Any courses that you guys will recommend to future students? Uh, it's pretty strict. The okay. courses that you have to take, right? And right. it takes up like pretty much my entire schedule right, right. now. Right. So there's not much liberty. But in terms of courses that like you have to take, I definitely recommend like the quantum mechanics courses. Mm -hmm. And also, if you do end up going through like the classical mechanics. Mm. Physics 354 is such a good course. Um, a course I would recommend is not required, I think, but it's Physics 250 mm. and it's uh, Introduction to Electrodynamics. And the reason I'm saying it's important is because they don't tell you this, but if you want to take basically any physics course in the third year, you need this course. Oh, okay. But they don't tell you that. So me, naively, being in a double major, I never ah. knew about this, so I took another course, So which I is see. why I'm backtracked on my physics by a year. I see. So so a physics 250, which is introduction to electrodynamics, is definitely a must if you're in physics mm. because, as I said, you just need that for all the rest of your stuff. Any favorite professors that you guys like to mention here? Mm. For me, okay, I have a couple. Professor Michael Luke, shout out to him. And uh, also Professor Steinberg, who mm. teaches second year intro to quantum mechanics. I mean, I would definitely agree with the Steinberg recommendation. Mm. Uh, Dr. Steinberg is definitely a gem. I think another one I would mention with is uh, Brian Wilson, who is, is he's in the experimental physics department mm. and he is oh my god he is amazing because he explains things in a very very clear concise way i just like the way he's he's a very jovious fellow i just i just really i just really like his personality the moment mm. i come up to him with a question so sort of like sure how can i help you today <laughs> so like i just love it you know i just okay. love it were there any required courses that you guys had to take in high school to get into the program math and physics i mean yeah <laughs> no so no not even okay not even uh it's recommended obviously Obviously, if you can take AP to take an AP course, right. mm -hmm. you don't need to take the AP exam. So save yourself money because mm -hmm. U of T doesn't care about AP. But in terms of requirements, I mean, just the math requirements, so advanced functions and calculus, and then grade 12 physics. I don't exactly. even think grade 12 physics is required. It is. Is it? Yeah. Beautiful. But none of the other sciences, right? No. None of the other sciences. Okay. Any popular grad school options? I don't know about popular. Yeah, I, don't I don't know about really popular. Know. It, it, it depends sure. on your interest again about what yeah, you guys are saying earlier. For sure. Okay. And, yeah, also I guess, it. yeah, that, that is a very good point because different schools will have like professors who are really good at one specific thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you're interested in, a, in like a specific field, you might like research professors in that field and just right. go to that school. Mm -hmm. Right. So the wrap-up question, the last question that I have for you guys is, uh, do you guys have any tips for upcoming math and 
and physics students who might be looking to apply to U of T. Okay, yes. yes. Ray and I have been through uh, the ringer with first year calculus. Okay. So like Mat 137. They don't tell you this, but you need to know proofs. Mm. Well, you don't. They well, teach, they teach it, to it to you. They don't really teach it really <laughs> well. <laughs> so if you're going into math and physics, you know you're going to take 137. Definitely like learn proofs before coming into. Uh, mm. I think that's it. Because like physics is like, it's pretty much just like continuing high school physics, but a little mm. bit harder. The only thing that was like super hard was the was the calculus. Mm. Well, that's all the question I have for you guys. Quick shout out to Ray and Parker for joining me today. They have a very cool uh, podcast named Math and Physics Podcast. So make sure to check them out. Uh, you guys can find them on Spotify, Apple, anywhere, music, anywhere, anywhere. Okay, anywhere. Okay, anywhere. anywhere. Really. But yeah, thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, and thank you guys for watching and I'll see you I'm guys next time. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feel